Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Michael DiNicola, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about everything Spider-Man. We're gonna talk about the rumors in regards to Spider-Man 3, and I'm gonna give you a complete process breakdown of the drawing and the thumbnail, so stick around. Let's talk a little bit about some of the Spider-Man 3 rumors that have been um, all around the internet lately. Let's break this down. First things first, what do we know for a fact about the next Spider-Man movie? Well, we know it's happening. We know they just started filming it. We know that Jamie Foxx, Jamie Foxx just signed on. Or, well, he just let, he just, you know, they just let it out that he just signed on to reprise his character as Electro. So the question there is, is he still the same dude? Is he Electro from Andrew Garfield? Andrew Garfield Spider-Verse? Spider-Verse. Spider Universe? Is he a new Electro? I'm pretty sure. You know what? The perfect analogy to who Jamie Foxx's Electro will be is to J. Jonah Jameson's version. J.K. Simmons's version of J. Jonah Jameson. Wow, what a fucking mouthful. But yeah, see, J. <laughs> J.K. Simmons's J. Jonah Jameson exists parallel get it parallel to the Tobey Maguire Sam Raimi Spider-Verse same same character different universe I wouldn't be surprised if by that logic we start seeing perhaps in the MCU other iterations of characters that we've already seen if they if they've done it with J Jonah Jameson and they're clearly going to do that or most likely going to do that with um Jamie Foxx's Electro then shit man there could be any there could be any number of um, alternative villains: Venom, Hobgoblin, Green Goblin. Really, uh, really, the possibilities are the possibilities are endless. All right, back to what we also know for a fact. For a fact, they let it they let it out that the Doc, uh, Doc Strange himself, is going to be showing up in Spider-Man Three. I think they said I think they let it out that that the Doc is going to be Spider-Man's new mentor. Jesus, man, how many mentors has this guy had? Assuming uh, Ben Ben Parker was alive at some point, haven't really talked about it much, but assuming that he was in fact alive, you've got Ben Parker, you've got Iron Man, you've got John Favreau is happy, you got Mysterio pretending to be for a little bit. I mean, uh, and then Nick Fury. Nick Fury also kind of taking Spider Man under his. How many how many mentors is Spider Man supposed to have? I mean, geez. I mean, how long is it going to take, for, you know, for him to kind of put on his big boy spandex and take the wheel? Anyway, mentorship aside, I'm very interested in that we know for a fact that Benedict Cumberbatch and Jamie Foxx are going to be uh, in the Spider-Man movie confirmed because that leads to all kinds of other rumors for, you know, let's let's keep with the Doc Strange stuff. There was another there was another rumor going around that Doctor Strange might be showing up in um, in the Scarlet Witches uh, series, the WandaVision series. The title of Doctor Strange's next movie, Doctor Strange 2 and the Multiverse of Madness. Here's something you might not know. In the uh, in the making of the Spider-Verse movie, in the making of the Spider-Verse movie, they originally wanted, apparently, I'm pretty sure this is out there. I'm pretty sure I'm not making this up. They wanted Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire and Tom Holland to reprise their roles and to show up as cameo characters in the movie. They wanted them to reprise their roles. This way it would kind of tie a true Spider-Verse together, uh, but they couldn't get it together for one reason or another. What most people think is going on is that Sony, off the major success that was into the Spider-Verse, is going to be leading the live action Spider-Men together for a live action Spider-Verse movie. That seems to be that seems to be where the rumor mills are going and that seems to be where what everybody's thinking. But I mean, who knows, dude? All that stuff is really hard to put together. Who knows if Andrew Garfield will want to be back or Tommy McGuire, who is a notoriously legendary douchebag in Hollywood. You know, if they try to get him back, he's probably going to ask for a fortune. Tommy McGuire, who I think for me personally, and again, super subjective, I think edges out Tom Holland a little bit when it comes to my favorite um, on-screen version of the character. Uh, that said, I would love to see Tommy McGuire back. I would love to see the three of them interacting together. I can't help but be a giant fanboy when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> I I love that shit, man. As a comic book nerd, I did multiverse, seeing different iterations of a character meet face to face. Ugh, God, huge, huge nerd boner. 
huge nerd boner for that kind of stuff. All right, so where else, where else could they take it? Here's the thing, there's the rumor mill is going so hard, you're hearing rumors about everything now. So it's not just that Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire are back. They're also like, well, that opens up the door to the greater multiverse. So obviously they're leaning towards the Sinister Sticks because we, all right, now that we have Lecture on the table, uh, Vulture, Mysterio, Scorpion, all from the MCU. I know Mysterio is dead, but I mean, come on, dude. Mysterio, is a, uh, he's a trickster, man. He's a master of illusion. Who knows what we saw when Mysterio died? Also, Mysterio wasn't just the beautiful Jake Gyllenhaal. Mysterio was a team of people, one who which got away. That fat kid, you know, that fatty fat cakes from uh, the Christmas story. Yeah, that guy, he got away, right? He did get away, right? Uh, what, whatever. <laughs> if you didn't get away, please feel free to yell at me in the comments. Who else we got? If they're opening up shit to the multiverse, who's alive? Sandman's still alive from Tobey Maguire's uh, world. Rhino's still alive from Andrew Garfield's. Venom and Morbius are out there. Morbius, who's not necessarily a bad guy, not a good guy either. He drinks blood or sucks. Does he drink blood? I think he sucks. Does he like suck the juice out of people? He's slurping up juice from his, I remember, listen, <laughs> when I was a kid, I watched the cartoon in the 90s and uh, Michael Morbius had these little, he had these little vaginas on his palms and he would just, uh, I think he would just put them on you and just start slurping you up. Uh, I think he was drinking plasma. I Listen, the 90s was a very long time ago. I don't, I don't remember, but Venom, Venom's still out there. Venom also an anti-hero. I mean, who knows if they're going multiverse, they, could hypothetically take other iterations of characters that are dead in these worlds. For Andrew Garfield, that means the lizard. Uh, for Tobey Maguire's uh, spider world, that means hell. That means uh, Mr. Alfred Molina perhaps reprising his role as Doc Ock. Or even uh, fucking Willem Dafoe, dude. Mr. There was a firefight himself. Mr. Fuck I'm a machine, aka the Green Goblin, the original man. God, I hope if they do bring him back, I hope he's fucking, <laughs> I hope he has a different outfit. God, that outfit was terrible. Oh my God, so bad. Anyway, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is the possibilities once, and this is the beautiful thing about the multiverse and thank God Spider-Verse did so well. The beautiful thing about the multiverse is that all doors are open for any possibility, which is, you know, a gift and a curse, right? Because they could write some pretty horrible shit, but at least you have the option. Miles Morales, of the last 10 years, the Miles Morales version of Spider-Man has really, really taken people, which is fucking awesome. A compelling character, for those of you who don't know, uh, Miles Morales from the comics. In his universe, Peter Parker dies, but he's not, he's not an old guy, like from the Spider-Verse movie. He's kind of a younger, kind of teenage, teenage, I believe he's a teenager. He becomes, for Miles, the Uncle Ben type when he dies, because Miles has his powers at the time, blames himself for not taking on the mantle before Peter's death. So he vows to uh, carry on the name and, you know, great power, responsibility, etc., etc. But with the multiverse, who knows what that means for the introduction to Miles? They could very well pull a Miles out from, who knows, maybe a Tobey Maguire's universe, right? Maybe Toby's about to die there. I don't know. Maybe Andrew Garfield dies and they, they pull a Miles out of his universe. Really, I could totally see Sony wanting to push for a Miles movie and to have him interact with Tom Holland at the very least, especially since, like I said, with the huge success of the Spider-Verse film, paired with what is most likely going to be the success of the Miles uh, Morales Spider-Man game that's coming out for PlayStation 5. You can see Sony is pretty fucking invested, pretty, pretty ready to hop on the Miles Morales train. So uh, it's only a matter of time before they bring him into the fold in regards to the MCU and the Sony Spider-Verse, the live action Spider-Verse. Shit, man, you, yeah, your guess is as good as mine as to what's gonna happen there. Comment down below, let me know what you think of all these rumors. Let me know who your favorite Spider-Man is. All right, let's talk about the art. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you, straightforward. Spider-Man is probably one of my favorite characters of all time. Which, honestly, even to me, it sounds a little sounds a little cliche. It sounds a little lame. It's almost like saying Batman is your favorite character or Superman. It's a very mainstream kind of cookie cutter, like vanilla being your favorite flavor of ice cream. It's a very basic way to go. He's my favorite character, and this is this is represented a lot in my art. I have drawn Spider-Man a lot. I want I want I want to say of all the characters that I've drawn. I've probably drawn him the most. 
from an illustrator's perspective. Drawing Spider-Man is a great way to push your anatomy to the extremes. It's a great way to test your perspective. It's funny I'm talking about his weird anatomy in a video where I don't actually do that. I draw him laying down, but there's a reason for that and I'm going to I'm going to explain why I did that in a little bit. I want to mix it up. I draw on Spider-Man so often swinging like through the skyline and there's plenty of that. If you probably type Spider-Man swing comic book illustration, you're probably going to get a few million results <laughs> and the majority of them are going to be incredible artists who have drawn it better than you or I ever could have or ever could have dreamed of doing. Instead, I want to mix it up. So here, I didn't want it to be another Spider-Man drawing of him doing his thing, which I love, by the way. You give me a well-drawn Spider-Man doing his spidery things, <laughs> doing whatever a Spider-Man can, I'm all there. Uh, however, this drawing is the opposite of that. I wanted to, to draw a scene that you don't you don't always see. You don't always see when you're thinking when you're thinking of the iconic Spider-Man images. It's not so often that you see him in the, during the aftermath. Because to be fair, it's it's not that captivating. It's not that bombastic. Watching Spider-Man punch Dr. Octopus in the face, watching Spider-Man save Mary Jane or Gwen Stacy or saving Aunt May, you know, watching Spider-Man swinging into the rescue and saving everything at the very last moment, or even Spider-Man pushing himself to his absolute limits to come through for his friends, for his family, for the people that he cares about most. All those are great, but I wanted the Spider-Man after all that. What does that Spider-Man look like? You know, a Spider-Man who's been buried in rubble, right? A Spider-Man who's, who's just saved his loved ones from the clutches of his mortal enemies. From a Spider-Man who's yet again put his life on the line for the city that he loves and has just narrowly escaped with his life to no applause, to booze, to calls of vigilantism, sometimes being an enemy of the city that he loves. I wanted to take a look at the, that character who does this thanklessly, who comes home to his shitty apartment or his shitty room, living with Aunt May, kind of collapsing on his bed. Which brings me to one of my favorite parts of Peter Parker, which unfortunately uh, is a drawback. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I, fucking, I really enjoy Tom Holland's Spider-Man. I know a lot of people aren't really into it, especially classic Spider-Man fans, because it's such a different version of Peter Parker than what we're used to. Replacing Uncle Ben in the role of fatherly figure is Tony Stark. And with that comes a lot of advantages, including being a, mem being a member of the Avengers. So a lot of the versions of Spider-Man that we're used to, him being on his own, not having any backup, not really having any superhero friends, not having any money or resources, all that is kind of kind of changed. It's kind of changed in the MCU, which which does a little bit of a disservice to the character, because one of my favorite parts of Peter Parker is the fact that he he his life sucks. <laughs> in Spider-Man Two, uh, in the Sam Raimi films, especially in Spider-Man Two, you have a Peter Parker who is just beaten down. A Peter Parker who is just he's been absolutely put upon, um, not only by life, but by his choices. Think about it. His love life is awful. He's told Mary Jane he can't be with her. He's essentially broken her heart and his. Why? Because he doesn't want to put her life at risk because he's Spider-Man. His relationship with Aunt May completely falls apart because he's essentially partly to blame for Uncle Ben's death. His schooling, he's falling behind in class. He could barely stay awake. He could barely pay attention. He barely has enough time to participate in his university, right? He can't hold a job down. Every aspect of a person's life, your friends, your family, your job, your career, your goals, all of those things are falling apart because of his singular choice to be Spider-Man. He's broke, he's poor, he's hungry, he can't pay his bills, he can't have meaningful relationships with anyone because this thankless job requires him to make the utmost sacrifice. Spider-Man's ability to sacrifice all these aspects of his life, to be a hero, to do what's right, to use his, his gifts, his power, to use them to save people. There's a beautiful scene though in the MCU when um, Peter Parker alludes to that with uh, Tony Stark. Look, when you can do the things that I can, but you don't, 
and then the bad things happen. They happen because of you. You feel the weight of that responsibility. And that is, that in a nutshell, is what it means to be Spider-Man. So yeah, so, <laughs> so this drawing is essentially me putting you in that crummy room, be it him on his own, or be it in Aunt May's house. After yet another night out, another night of beatings, another night of villainy, another night of crime fighting laying down and just feeling the weight, the weight of the world on his shoulders. The camera angle that I used, I wanted us up and looking down on him. I wanted the viewer to feel maybe sad, maybe empathy. Maybe I wanted us, the viewer, to loom over Spider-Man, loom over him like his responsibilities, loom over him like his burden. And that's why I chose this angle. And that's why I chose this piece. Thank you for checking out my video. I've been Michael DiNicola. I hope you like Spider-Man as much as I do. Also, I have to thank everybody who's been liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Also, people who've been buying the t-shirts and the merch. For those of you who don't know, I do artwork. You could buy it on one of these or hang it up on your wall. Links in the description. Also, you can catch me live on Twitch Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And uh, beside that, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.